It's very interesting to think about where things have shifted with respect to unmet need for patients. If you had asked me a year ago, I would have said the one unmet need that's biggest is adequate preventive therapy for patients with migraine to prevent their migraines with a safe, tolerable, and effective migraine-specific treatment. Since the advent of the monoclonal antibodies, what has become the biggest unmet need is access. We need to be able to figure out ways of getting the new treatments which are so effective to our patients. Calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP, is an example of translational research made real. It was eventually recognized that if one looked for where CGRP receptors were in the nervous system, they were located at every site that was involved in the genesis or processing of migraine. And from that, the idea evolved that if one could target either CGRP or these receptors and remove one or the other, one could either terminate or prevent migraine and that has what has come to pass. In the United States there are three that are US FDA approved. The first one approved was Arenumab or Amovig. Uh, arenumab is a fully human monoclonal antibody that targets the canonical CGRP receptor. It's the only one that's fully human and the only one that targets the receptor. It is administered monthly by patients with an auto-injector in either a 70 or a 140 milligram dose. The second that was approved was fremenezumab or Ajovi. A Jovi is a Jovi is a fully humanized monoclonal antibody, meaning about 5% of it is, is mouse uh, component. It targets the CGRP itself, the actual peptide ligand. Patients administer this. It does not have an auto-injector currently, so it's administered with a pre-filled syringe, and it can be either administered monthly with a 225 milligram dose or quarterly with a 675 milligram dose. The third that was approved is galconazumab, or Mgality. This is a humanized monoclonal antibody, so 10% murine, targeting CGRP, the ligand, again. And it is administered with a loading dose of 240 milligrams the first month, and then every month thereafter, patients administer 120 milligrams with an auto-injector. The interesting aspect uh, that we learned from the monoclonal antibody studies is that migraine is migraine. And these monoclonal antibodies appear to work on the broad spectrum of migraine patients. Patients with low frequency episodic migraine, high frequency episodic migraine, chronic migraine with 15 or more headache days per month. Patients with migraine without aura, patients with migraine with aura. Patients with migraine and acute medication overuse and without medication overuse. And they appear to work equally well in all of those situations. When asked which, which patients we would not administer these to, people without migraine. Galconazumab has been shown to be effective in preventing episodic cluster headache and is before the FDA for that indication. But beyond that, they've really not been tested or successful in treating other headache disorders yet. So we reserve these for migraine patients. Short term and long term are the same actually in these, uh, with respect to these monoclonal antibodies. We have not seen significant safety signals, you name the system, we just haven't seen them in either the 12 week randomized control trials that were used for regulatory approval or the longer term safety and tolerability trials which now extend out to five years for arenumab and three years for the others and thousands of patients have been through these studies and we have yet to see a significant safety signal in any system. I, I would have to say knock on wood. I think we need to maintain vigilance because this is a new class of medicines, but what has been 
remarkable has been the amazing safety and tolerability of these drugs in the face of what what really has turned out to be unprecedented efficacy. And it's really been a dramatic shift in the paradigm for the treatment of migraine. We don't know, and that's why we need to maintain vigilance. Uh, I think we will be helped by looking at 200,000 patients and comparing to case controls. There are over 250,000 patients on these drugs now already in less than a year. We monitor safety signals for the vascular system, for the liver, although they don't go through the liver, they go through the reticuloendothelial system, neuromuscular systems. So far, we just don't see anything that suggests a problem, and probably because they are so targeted in terms of their, um, their um, um, ligand or receptor profiles.